Preparing to live stream. Okay. Preparing to live stream. Oh, that's me. Hang on. I don't want that running. So we are live. Okay. Okay. Okay, call this meeting to order. Um, join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. It's a stand for now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. John, would you open the meeting up with prayer? Sure. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you again for bringing us together here to serve your community, to serve um, the children of our community. We ask that you uh, pour your blessings upon us, keep our hearts open so that we can hear your call, that we remove our own selfish feelings and we put forth um, uh, an attitude of service to our community and to our children. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Okay. Yeah. Jenna's on. Sure okay. Um, so tonight we are minus Don McCarter, and um, uh, member Jennifer Dildine is with us. She is zooming with us tonight. There are four of us. And we're going to start with delegations, communications. Yes, um, currently there aren't any. So we're going to move along to uh, Superintendent Reese's update. Yes. Now. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, tonight I do have some information to share with all of you. Um, the first is the Indiana Department of Ed provide the schools a reentry guidance on Friday. Um, I need everyone to understand that the Department of Ed said that it is not their guidance. It is a compilation guidance from different entities throughout the state. And as we anticipated, it is a 38 page document and I'll make sure and put that on our website as well so that everybody can um, see the guidance that we were given. And this is about the re-entry to the start of school. There is so much information within this document that um, it's taken me several days to digest and uh, discussion through uh, different avenues and with different superintendents uh, throughout Lake County and Porter have happened within the last week uh, to talk about what was within this document. And what I want everyone to understand um, is that Right now, uh, our plan is, and what I would like to do is to kind of start back traditionally as we normally do. Um, but that depends on a lot of factors, which you'll see when you read that plan. With that being said, I have uh, put a committee together, uh, administrators, directors, some board members, and the teachers and the teachers association and uh, other staff and what we're going to do is kind of go through that plan beginning next Monday. We'll continue to meet um, superintendent wise uh, together to discuss our plans. Everyone in the Northwest Indiana is planning to get their plans, uh, reentry plans, approved in July by their board. But as we found out last Friday, it's not a simple task as just putting a plan in front of our boards and everybody agreeing to that plan and everybody is happy and we all start back normally. What we found out is we have to have approval by our local uh, health department. When we contacted, one of our superintendents contacted the local health department, uh, they found out rather quickly that they are also having to approve our plan and they were not aware of that. So that's put a little bump in our road, so to speak, and right now, the superintendents are waiting on a, a determination because that kind of decides 
how we're going to start school. And that I need to share with all of you in just a minute um, of what we're asking for. But some of the things um, that they have put in this plan that you need to be aware of is like, we can't have drinking fountains. They want some personal bottles of water. They also, in this plan, let kids spread out with the six foot social distancing. We also have to ramp up our hand hygiene, such as before and after re recess, even if we can have that and other events. They also talk about procedures for when a student or staff member gets sick and what that entails. They also talk about limiting access to visitors. That means parents um, limiting how often you can come to the building. So there's a lot of factors in this plan. And like I said, it took me several days to digest it. I'm still not fully digesting it. But this group that I'm meeting with on Monday, we're gonna start the task of doing that. And we're gonna put a draft plan together. And then um, my hope is um, with all of us that we're going to put it out for our parents to, and to review it and kind of give some feedback. From there, um, I'll take that plan to the board for approval. But before that, I do have to have the Lake County Health Department sign off on it. Yes, my goal is to do this in July. And what I'm going to tell the board is I'm going to plan for it to be by the next board meeting. Well, you know, that's a short time frame when you talk about this plan. I know the board has, some of them have been able to review some of that 38 plan, and it's not a, a oh, you start school normally like we've always done. Um, there's a lot of restrictions to it. And even there are restrictions when athletic starts back up. And that's going to be the first task I'm going to have to do with this committee first, because for athletics to, and for us to even have athletes in our possession and on our facilities, there has to be certain guidances that we follow. And that is, has to be done by July 6. So with that being said, board, I may have to call a special meeting to get certain things approved along the way. Um, so I just want to make sure people were aware of that. From there, um, We'll release that plan to the parents and the community. And then at that time, parents, um, you may have a choice um, whether you're going to send your child according to this plan. And also I'm looking into if you keep your kids at home to start the school year, how I can still deliver our education to you and how can that be done? So there are gonna be options for you parents as we head down this pathway, but in your mind, as you're reading the draft and things, you're gonna to have to make a decision on how and when you're going to have your child come back to school. Um, we want them to come back and we hope that you like the plan that we have in place. And that is our main goal. But I do know that um, in talking with other area superintendents, um, they are hearing just like I am, there are some parents that have said, no, I'm not. But we don't want to lose you because we do know that as they get older and get into high school, some of them still want to play sports and want to participate in our extracurricular activities. In order to do so, you have to be a part of our school system. And I want to provide an option to where you can have both. Be able to learn at home and still be able to participate with us in Griffith Public Schools with our events and athletics. As you can see, I've, I've done that and wrote that on the three board members or and Jen, who's been Zooming here um, with us throughout the evening. And they're just as overwhelmed as I am and, and trying to wrap their brains around all this. It's not a simple thing as, do we follow that guidance? And, and we as a community say, no, we're not going to. That is not really an option that we were told um, by our state superintendent of the Indiana Department of Ed. There are a lot of things to this plan um, that we may not agree with. Um, and you may not agree philosophically, or you may not agree um, according to, say, masks and whether the kids should wear masks um, while at school. That is one of the guidances within that document. Again, this all goes back to what the health department is going to okay. And if we, if we don't do certain things, they may send the plan back to us and say, try again, and this is what I mean. So I'll come back to my one point with what we're waiting on. The big main question that the superintendents and I had, 
right now is if we require students to wear masks to school, does that get rid of the six foot social distancing requirement that the governor always talks about? If that does, then we can start traditionally as we normally do. And the only thing that's different is we hype up the, the hygiene of the students. We definitely sanitize. Um, we do kind of spread out, but we don't have to adhere to that six feet. And um, a lot of ramifications come with that. If you if that does not get rid of, I can't find a better word, get rid of the six foot social distancing requirement just because a kid wears a mask. There are a lot of ramifications. Think of cafeteria, think of recess, think of walking down a hallway. As I um, share with the board, I have a nephew that's going to be entering kindergarten. I can't imagine, and I'm sure some of you are thinking, wonder if that mask drops on the floor and someone steps on it. What are we going to do then? So there's a lot of parameters, a lot of things that the, the superintendents um, and I have been talking about that one of us goes, oh, we haven't thought of that. Uh, and that's what this job of this committee, this committee is going to be. So again, parents, you will have a chance to weigh in on this, on this plan and review it before we move on down the road. Um, but there's a lot of pieces to it that we have to discuss internally um, prior to giving it to you guys. Um, also, we're going to be exploring uh, new tools to improve our remote learning. We've already done so uh, with the platform we've heard from you. I know Unified Classroom has not worked the way we've all intended, and I'm looking at uh, Robbie. It's not how she wanted it to roll out either. Um, so we've made some adjustments that you're going to find that we hope is for betterment for you guys as well. That means there's going to be a lot of PD for you parents as well um, as we start the school year, especially too. So as you can see why um, this has been keeping Mrs. Reese up at night, um, there are a lot of pieces to this. And I want, we want to make sure we do what's right for our children here at Griffith Public Schools. Um, and so I hope that you bear with us, be patient, and I will put certain things on the website for your review, such as the guidance from the DOE. We'll make sure you get a copy of that, and we'll keep you posted on our progress of this committee. Again, this committee is going to start on Monday, and uh, we hope to kind of get some things kind of talked about. And periodically, the committee may say, hey, why don't you, why don't you uh, survey the parents and see what they think right now so that we can do that throughout the process. So um, this is something we never ever dreamed of. I don't know about you uh, as a parent, but I never dreamed as an educator that I'd also be tackling um, a pandemic and figuring out how to start school differently than what we normally and traditionally have done. So again, we'll keep you posted on that. Secondly, um, our seniors will be graduating this Sunday, um, and you should have received your correspondence from Mrs. Brenner. If you have not, please make sure and reach out to her by email. I know she's been on WJOB a couple of times, especially today. I guess she was on there, um, I believe, again. Um, they've been trying to get uh, the uh, salutatorian and valedictorian, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, their speeches. Um, taped and ready to roll. The goal is um, for those community members that are wondering about graduation, we are going to have the seniors come on site with their parents in the car, and we are going to let the um, seniors walk across the stage and get a diploma from uh, Mrs. Brenner and myself, and then exit. And then um, this is all being videotaped and taped now of the speeches, and then we'll roll it out. Um, luckily, we have WJOB. And uh, they have been uh, working fiercely to get this created and that we will have a rollout of the actual ceremony for everyone to have and see. And uh, we hope that it will be um, on there for you guys uh, for years to come. And I think that's something unique for this class uh, that's never been with other classes, um, that this graduation is gonna be uh, taped and they're gonna be uh, basically um, on YouTube for, for many years to come. So congratulations, seniors, and I can't wait to see you Sunday. And right now, I think the weather looks perfect. So I cannot wait. Next, I do want to publicly thank our police department in Griffith. 
I know they have been working tirelessly around the clock. I've talked to Chief Mance on several occasions. And I know that uh, together with the police department, I had to make some tough decisions. And I do want to thank them um, because I do know that uh, the partnership and alliance to keep not only the school system safe, meaning our staff and students, they also had the responsibility of keeping the community safe. And I want to thank them for that. Um, and I want to thank them for being um, a part of our partner, um, and a positive partner for that. I did get a communication um, from, and I talked with Jay Buckmaster from the Griffith YMCA. At this time, the BZA meeting on June 15th at 6 p.m. had to be um, the, for the variance approval for it. Um, they are um, not able to do that at the June meeting, but we'll be doing that at the July meeting. So I'll, we will make sure and get that communication out. Now, Jay did say, if you would like to go to the BZA meeting and talk about uh, no in June, <laughs> he said they can go ahead and go. It's an open board meeting and they can go and support the Y and kind of give them their feedback. You can go ahead and still attend that meeting. Um, if you want to send your letters of support, um, you can send to Jay Bethmaster or Rick Rifa, the town council members, all of them. Um, the, um, the window of that is not closed. So I do know um, Rick did share with us, um, was it Monday night, um, that he has received several supportive letters. So um, keep those coming, please. For those community members who received an email from Griffith Public Schools, I know there was a little bit of confusion. That email was on part um, from the board and myself. Uh, it's our initiative to share what is happening in the district with patrons who do not have anyone in the school system and don't know what's going on. So that massive email went out. And I want you to know that that's a link to our corporation newsletter so that you can get the latest news and information on what's happening within our district. So anytime any community member has any questions, please um, email me and I will get back to you right away. Um, also for the patrons that are watching in tonight, we're gonna to hear about our facilities and the needs that we will have to focus on um, as we move forward to ensure that our school environments are conducive to learning and teaching. So as you are aware, uh, it will take some funding to get these facilities and needs addressed. So you're gonna to need to pay, stay tuned in the near future for how the board's gonna tackle this task as they will learn for the first time tonight, the extent and the need of the upgrades within GPS. We also will have a link to this report on our website so that you can view uh, what's going to be shared with us later. And um, so I want to make sure the patrons knew that too. And also know that reading is not a part of this because um, we have already um, thought about repurposing that. And so um, they're only addressing Wadsworth, Berger, the middle school and the high school tonight on those. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that when that time comes about the uh, facility report. Also, I know this is rather long, but I do want to end with, um, I had the opportunity to be part of the community gathering held on June 7th at Centennial Park. And um, I want to say, um, that it was a very moving um, time for me. We heard from a couple of former students that talked about their experiences within the school district. And I, uh, and I know I said Centennial Park, I'm sorry, Central Park. Um, I say that all the time. <laughs> um, please know that uh, that was very moving to me to hear the students speak uh, regarding their experiences while um, in our, in our midst and within our district. Please know that I'm very committed to promoting a society free of all forms of discrimination and injustice based on race, background, or religion. I do value our belief in providing equitable opportunities for all students. And as we listen to the former students speak that day, we were reminded over and over again how one felt while learning at Rick Public Schools and growing up in this community. I'm heartbroken to know that all of them felt the discrimination, the disrespect, and equitable treatment throughout their years while here. 
Those who did speak shared how alone they felt within our elementary and middle school buildings because they were not integrated with others of their own race or color. Do you know that I did hear you speak loud and clear? And I want to reinforce that this is part of the reason for our change of grade configurations in our elementary schools. Not fully the reason for that, but that was one of the pieces. And if you were present at that community gathering, you heard their plea of for equity and respect in their speeches. This week, I had probably joined the other superintendents in Northwest Indiana in the fight for equity by educating our students that respect, kindness, and love are the ways to a better society for all. You do know our children deserve this, and I do know that, and I know our world needs all of us to participate. I also zoomed in with our, uh, Dr. McCormick from the Indiana Department of Education. She has been charged by our legislation, legislators and the governor to also begin that focus within our schools within Indiana as well. So I hope all of you join me along with the other leaders within Northwest Indiana to rally and commit to that change. I will close with these final words. The words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. ring loud and clear. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. They still ring as true to us today as they did in the past. So let's work together for positive change because we all must be persistent when talking about race and racism. I know it's not a subject some of us like to talk about. It makes us feel uncomfortable, but each one of us has a role to play in our community, our workplace, and in our family to bring equity and safety to all Americans in our society, and especially those who enter our doors within Griffith Public Schools. So let us let our love and respect for one another define us, and we must come together at this time to continue the important work for a safer, a more civil community. This will define the community of Griffith and Griffith Public Schools for generations to come. So I hope you help me continue to find those solutions. And I want to thank the um, chief because he started that headway and that journey with that community event. So thank you, Chief Vance. And that I my superintendent notes. Does anybody want to join? Um, anybody here? Did you have anything that you wanted to add? Okay. I'm sorry. I put this in front of me. I have this right back. I put this in front of me, and this was from um, Zachary Hart, Darnell's family. Griffith Public Schools, please extend our thanks to all the staff at Griffith Public Schools who sent the most beautiful arrangement of yellow and white flowers to Zach. Thank you so much, the family of Zachary Hart Darnell. And that was really touching. Um, he's a very special young man. And it, I know this um, grandmother and mother really appreciate everything that um, we did for Zachary. And I know that we have some students that are missing him, um, especially from his class that he was in as well as his teachers and the support staff. So I did want to read that from that family. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you, Michelle. I'm gonna hand it over to um, Megan Damron for financial support. Thank you. For the month of May, our revenues were higher than our expenditures by $546,000. The May state revenue report was released on June 5th. The state revenues were down by 233.3 million from the December 2019 forecasted amounts. There was approximately 669 million from income tax that was not collected in April. Their hope is that the majority of those revenues will be collected in July. The governor did extend the deadlines for certain local income tax returns to July 15th of 2020. This in turn extends the revenue that we receive from county distributions. I would like to touch briefly on the CARES Act funding, as many keep hearing in the news and such that this money has been provided to school to help offset how we need a plan for COVID and reopening of schools. Breaking down the billions of dollars that the federal government has provided, our portion is $356,591.19, in which we do have to share this with non-pub schools if a Griffith resident attends that non-pub. A recent document shared with us that was put together by the Association of School Business Officials International and the School Superintendents Association, the cost to reopen schools could run into the millions. As we review the guidance released by the governor's office, 
We will also be reviewing how to fund the extra expenses that will be coming our way due to this pandemic and the impact on our schools. A study by the American Federation of Teachers has estimated that America's K-12 schools will need an average of 1.2 million each to reopen from the coronavirus-related closures. This is about 2,300 per student, in which no additional funding has been released in order to address these added expenses. In fact, just the opposite is in talks with education, education budgets, and they are in discussions regarding cutting the budget. Without extra funding, schools will be struggling financially with the plans to reopen and the additional costs coming along to make sure students, faculty, and community are safe. This is a fluid report as daily changes are occurring on the impacts to school systems. Thank you, Maria. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Uh, so we're gonna move on to the consent agenda. And I'm looking for oh, I forgot all about that. Um, okay, at this time, I'm going to give the microphone over to Rich Lieber. I think he might have a report. Yes, I attended the redevelopment meeting earlier this month, and what was talked about was just uh, items going around in Griffith, which is the continuation of getting the Restaurant Depot um, site ready for building, which hopefully will be in early 2021. A little bit about the golf course area with uh, still working with the Little Kell River and the Army engineers and just small projects going around. Uh, it was stated that there have been a lot of permits throughout town. So people are using this pandemic to really fix up their homes and, and make this a better town. That's all I have. Uh, and just a quick reminder, since we have people, the reason we give these reports is because each board member sits on a community um, board to uh, be liaison to the school because of the partnership the school has with those uh, with those partners. So I sit on the uh, park board, and the biggest news is that playgrounds are open. <laughs> Go forth. I'll race you down the slide. Thanks, guys. Okay, consent agenda. Uh, we have items 3.1 through 3.7. Can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, Jen, second. I will second. Any discussion? Um, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, opposing? Oh, yeah, Jen. Lose again. I'm sorry, you broke up on me. Then we're taking a vote on the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Same sign opposed? Okay, motion carried. And um, we have a presentation at this time. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm going to hand it back over to Michelle. Yes. As I stated in my superintendent notes, we have a presentation tonight uh, to the board regarding our district facility assessment. It started about a year ago and uh, they concluded. Uh, and so we have Tony who's zooming in with his people. And that is why you have not our Tony, another Tony. Um, she's like, I'm not doing that. And uh, the the content that he is going to go through is the binder in front of you, board members. And again, patrons um, and parents, we do have, we'll have this on our website so you can review the facility um, assessment as well. So, Tony, how are you tonight? We're doing great. We're doing great. Thank you for letting us join you. Even though it's virtually, it's great to see everyone's faces. <laughs> you can see us, but we can't see you, but that's okay. Oh, there he is. I You're very, very small. Okay, that's it's, it's better that way. Trust me. It's <laughs> so. well, welcome, Tony and all, and the floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you, Superintendent Reese, and thank you, members of the board, for giving us some time tonight to kind of walk you through more of a summary of what you guys have in front of you, which is that which is the full binder, kind of the full district assessment. Um, just want to make sure that you guys can see the presentation just fine. 
Yes. Okay. And can you guys hear us okay as well? Yes, yeah. we can. All right, wonderful. Well, we'll, we'll we're going to jump right into it. So I will do just a quick team introduction so you, you know who the other individuals are kind of uh, joining uh, you via Zoom. A real quick brief background on performance services. I think most of you know us, but you might want just a quick background on that. And then we're going to jump right into the, I'll call it more of the short-term needs uh, for your school district. We'll kind of walk you through um, the assessment and really some of our recommendations and then discuss next steps and, and answer any questions you have. So kind of starting right in, my name is Tony Kuykendall. I'm the Business Development Manager for Performance Services, and I've had the opportunity to work with you all. We're kind of wrapping up our, our first project with Griffith Public Schools, so thank you for that opportunity. We really appreciate it. And also joining us tonight, uh, both Pete Berger. Pete, maybe you can wave down there. And yes, that's that, as we said before, that is the Berger um, related to Berger Elementary School. And as well as uh, Matt Peterson. And he, they're both of our project development engineers. So they've been the ones inside the building looking at your mechanical systems, your infrastructure, um, electrical plumbing, and so forth. And then last but not least is also Chris Garrity, who is our senior architect. So in addition to looking at just kind of the, I call it like the guts of the, the buildings, we also want to look at the architectural side. Um, how the finishes are, ADA compliance, secure entryways, um, roofs and windows, things, things of that nature. So you got the whole team on the phone tonight. Uh, because it is a Zoom meeting, I'll probably be doing most of the talking to keep it moving, but they'll be available to help answer any questions. So real quick background, uh, performance services. Uh, really, we're just, in, you know, design build, energy savings company, been doing this for over 20 years. And really our focus is on serving the, you know, K through 12 school market. We've done lots and lots of these projects as far as uh, building renovations, new additions, really with a focus on making your buildings high performing buildings, uh, optimal learning environments, energy efficient, and always that little takeaway box at the bottom. We really, we really focus on making sure you guys are happy and satisfied with the work that we, you, you ever entrust us with. Uh, and what's a little different about our company than some other companies or other processes, I like to say we're kind of a one-stop shop. So we kind of soup to nuts. We'll help you from the onset with the assessment, the engineering, obtaining competitive uh, pricing, project management, all the way to the performance assurance. So we have all those services in-house. Um, all right. So... I know Superintendent Reese kind of held this up, but I'm going to hold it up as well. well with my zooming, it may not show here, but uh, you guys probably have a binder in front of you is what I'm hoping for. That binder is really going to be the comprehensive study for you all. It will go through every single building, both mechanically and architecturally. Um, as you go building by building, there will be a short term summary for each, each facility. And then if you flip all the way to the back, which is what almost everybody does anyways, right? When you, when you get a report like this, the very last page on the back will actually have a, it's 11 by 17 sheet. It'll have an improvement list where we've helped categorize some of these recommendations into short, mid and long-term. And obviously some of those can be for discussion, um, but that's kind of based upon the recommendations and the conditions that we, we evaluated. With that being said, I'm gonna walk you through um, kind of the key takeaways or maybe some of the key short-term needs to maybe have on your radar as you guys start planning and figuring out you know, where the next investment needs to occur to help support your, your staff and your students. Uh, we'll go Barriger, then Wadsworth, and then the middle school, high school. So starting over at Barriger, um, I'm, I'm, this is a huge chart this for this first slide, but if you want to, a one minute kind of overview or kind of like health check on how your buildings are doing and all of your major components, this equipment list here is going to give that to you. 
Um, I'm starting with Barriger because it's one of the more, it's, it's one of the buildings in the best condition in your district. And if you look across the system here, as I'm kind of highlighting this first line item for boilers, you kind of go right over here as far as the, we look at the brand, the useful life of that system, when it was installed, and then how many, how many years left you have as far as a useful life. You've got significant life left on the boiler system. And really, as you go all the way down the board for your chillers or your chilled water plant, your fan coils, fan coils are basically what's in each one of your classrooms. Like when you kind of see either the unit ventilators on the floor or sometimes those are in the ceilings, that's actually what serves your classrooms. But pretty much across the board, Barriger Elementary School is in, is in really good shape for the next decade. So that's, I think, great news for the district. Um, we have a few, a few comments down here, but not a whole lot that we're going to be recommending. Um, so I'm going to jump right ahead here. Hey, Tony, this, this, yep. this, is, this is Pete. Can you go back to that slide, please? Yes. So I'd like everybody just take a look at that bottom line, the temperature controls. Uh, those things were updated in 2014, so you've got quite a bit of life. And the reason I want you to focus on that is to compare it to the other buildings. This is your newest temperature control system. And Georgia says she hardly gets any complaints on this building because of the new controls. So uh, this is her favorite building. Of course, it's my favorite because of the name. But um, uh, And I was hoping we could do some work in it, but it's in such good shape. There's really not much to do. So, th yeah, thanks for pointing that out, though, Pete. That's reason why you feel that way um, is, you know, besides uh, carpet and painting, things like that, that's not included in on this facility review. Correct. Tony. Yeah, I heard most of that. So a lot of the, a lot of the architectural components of, of as far as Barriger and some of the updates there, if you go to that very back sheet, We've included some of those updates kind of in the midterm or the mid horizon category of three to five years out, but it's certainly not a, in our opinion, not a short term need um, that you need to have on the, you know, on your radar for, you know, the next couple of years. And I, I'm just going to reiterate because I didn't have the microphone to my mouth when I asked the question. I was asking the question about painting and the carpeting because there are some areas where that is a need there at Berger. But as you can see, um, that was not written within this initial that you're looking at right now, report board members. Yeah, and I, I should have stated too. So there's, there's going to be some instances where you guys will know that there's certain pockets or certain areas that might need new finishes. Um, you know, obviously Chris walked through the building. We kind of looked at all the facilities but there's going to be certain areas that you may say, you know what, we still need some a little TLC in these areas, and we can certainly kind of incorporate that into the plan. Um, but I don't think it'll be nearly as a uh, a large expenditure as some of the other facilities that that may require it, require it more broadly. And why I'm saying that, Tony, too, and board members, because when we were moving um, some of the furniture, we did notice a couple rooms of the carpet where there were big rips in the carpet at Berger. So I just don't want to do the misnomer that that building's in perfect shape and there's nothing to do. I don't want to leave that in everybody's head because there are a couple of rooms where we do know we're going to have to look at that carpeting, especially with the block with the big rips, because one is a safety hazard, a liability. So um, I just, sorry, Tony, I just want to make sure people are aware of that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Point, point taken and, uh... That's, that's not a problem. Please, please chime in on any of those. So what you have here and kind of each building is going to follow the same format. We just have this, it's called, you know, kind of the, the short term improvement list. Some of the things Superintendent Reese just mentioned could be on there. There's just a few little things that we noticed doing the roof inspection and window inspection. There's just a few little snow guards and things that need to be kind of on there from a safety perspective. Uh, not a big deal. And I do want to take just a moment at Berger, Wadsworth, and obviously at your middle school, high school, you guys just did a large roofing project there. 
But we also partnered, I should have mentioned this, we also partnered with moisture management to help us evaluate the roofs and the windows. And in general, at Berger and Wadsworth, you guys still have it around another 10 years of useful life on those roofing systems. So other than basic maintenance, in case you get you know, some seams that have torn or pulled apart or a puncture or a broken drain or something along those lines, they're really, they really should perform well for you for the foreseeable future. And in, in regards to windows, your windows are older. Uh, there's, there's certainly no question about that. But based upon the evaluation and how they're performing, we did not, we put them in kind of the three to five year uh, time horizon because we think they're performing well enough that we would not recommend tackling that window project, you know, here and now, but maybe sometime in the next five years. So I just wanted to hit that because those are kind of shared at almost all, all three buildings we're going to talk about. I went quick on Berger because we didn't have nearly as many items there. So any, any questions on Berger before I move on to Wadsworth? Okay, we'll keep on moving. All right, Wadsworth, let's go ahead and kind of take a look at their, at their I guess I'll call it their scorecard. You'll, you're gonna to start to notice it's a little bit different than the scorecard that we just looked at for Berger because as we, as we start going through the main components here, you'll notice that we're almost at the useful life on the boiler system, which is your, your central plant for heating. Your fan coil units, which these are in every single classroom, that's all your, that's basically your learning environment for your students. You're almost at the uh, useful life on that system. Your hot water pumps, chilled water pumps, unit heaters. Unit heaters are basically like in your, as you enter the building and vestibules. And then as Pete Berger pointed out, you, you notice here your temperature control system is quite a bit older here. What that all means is there's certainly going to be some, this should be on your radar because there's certainly going to be some needs at this facility moving forward. And I do want to spend a little bit more time diving into the, the key aspects of that so you're aware. So just taking a quick look at your heating plant. You know, right now you've got the two boilers that are in that are installed. These boilers are almost 20 years old. Um, they still operate. They're they're in fair to poor condition as far as the, the the overall condition assessment. The other challenge with the boiler plant right now is they're 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 not high efficiency. Nor are the pumps, which are which that's the bottom picture there. Your pumps are all constant volume. So traditionally, we like to make sure you put in a variable speed drive or a variable speed pump so you're not constantly running or I guess you know using energy either 100% on or 100% off. So our recommendation would be to replace the two boilers with two high efficiency boilers with variable speed pumps, very similar to the project we just completed uh, this summer for you all uh, over at Reedy. So, Whenever we do that, we also update the controls um, on those systems at the same time so you can better manage um, the, the new equipment. The other area in the building right now, which once again, this is the one that we really kind of hone in on because it really affects the learning environment is what to do about your classroom HVAC. You know, right now, this upper picture here, that's just a picture of the fan coil unit, which basically it's just your, your HVAC unit that's in the ceiling. Uh, they're almost 20 years old. They are more difficult to maintain because one of your staff members has to get up on a ladder. So if they're changing filters or if they're having to get up there to tweak anything or fix a unit, they're, they're doing it while they're on a ladder. The bottom picture here is what's called a fresh air unit. So this system here actually needs a supplemented, supplemental unit to bring in the proper amount of fresh air to the classroom kind of per code. And those, that's also nearly 20 years old. So that kind of combo system is, is kind of reaching its useful life. What we would traditionally do, and really what our recommendation is here, is really to go back with what's called a vertical 
classroom unit. And you've probably seen these in a lot of other districts surrounding you all. But essentially it's a, you know, it's on the ground. It's, I'll, I'll, I'll call it more like a fridge kind of looking um, piece of equipment, but it's on the ground. It's easy to service, it's easy to maintain. And it does a great job of humidity control, consistent temperatures, and it brings in the right amount of fresh air. So, so that's, that's definitely a system that would be a major upgrade in every one of your classrooms. So before, and then Chris, I'm probably gonna turn this over to you here. That, that kind of recaps, in my opinion, most of the short-term mechanical needs at Wadsworth. And Chris, if you don't mind kind of walking through uh, some of the architectural needs and some of the, some of the basis of the kind of uh, from a programming perspective. Thanks, Tony. So he took a first pass through everything that you see behind the boiler room door and behind the wall. So um, now we get to look at what's on top of the wall and what's on our floors. So um, Wadsworth, what we looked at and a big concern throughout the building is really the, the finishes are old and they're worn. Um, all three built or all buildings are were really well maintained. Um, we didn't see anything going through um, these buildings. Wow, this is falling apart. Um, what we're really seeing is just, you know, age um, and use. Seeing a lot of people coming through the buildings, um, you start to see in some of the images like that, you, your carpet is just worn. Um, you're starting to get stains on it. You're starting to get um, things to be on their useful life uh, on the finishes. So um, the good news is I think everyone's, everything's well maintained. The staff are doing a great job on it. Um, it's just time that we need to get freshened up. Um, so aesthetically, throughout this entire building um, really needs to get some, um, some attention. Um, if you are doing a, a project there, that's really the time to start looking at um, upgrading some of the finishes. Let me go to the next slide. Um, the other big component in this building um, is really supporting the new program. Um, so moving kindergarten into this, pro this building um, really means you really need to lo start looking at some of those classrooms. And some of the concerns, a typical classroom is about 900 square feet. Um, because a kindergarten classroom, you're doing a lot more small groups. You're doing a lot more moving around a room. It's not so much sitting in um, an lecture-based environment. Those rooms typically are about 1,200 square feet. In addition, because you know these kids are, are smaller, um, they usually have kindergarten restrooms in, in the rooms. So um, right now, this building has two kindergarten rooms that are set up that way. Uh, if you're moving the program of six into that building, uh, really changing how those that wing gets designed is something that you guys should, should consider um, to make sure that there's equity among the rooms um, and that everyone's providing the right amount of program. Um, in addition to that, you can look at the media center or some other of these classrooms um, to see how you want to implement a more 21st century learning opportunities. So when you're doing a little bit of it, you can also start looking at some other spaces. Then go to the next one. Um, there are some other concerns that we had um, on the infrastructure side. So what you see in the upper right hand corner is one of our, your classrooms. Um, the case works in pretty good shape. Um, the concern we have is everything's hooks. So instead of what you see in a lot of, of new schools is um, coat cubbies. So each student has their own little box. Here, everyone's coat is hung up um, on a hook. The problem with that is transfer of lice and disease between everyone. Um, this was common practice throughout the 90s, um, even into the 2000s. Um, as we start to, to learn, the, the world starts to learn, um, a lot of schools are going to these cubbies. So everyone has their own uh, while there's not a door, everything's enclosed and, and locked in or secured in their one spot so you don't get cross-contamination. Um, the other one in the lower right is your restrooms. Um, this is one of your kindergarten restrooms. It is not ADA accessible. Um, so if, if someone's in a wheelchair, that they, they can't necessarily use that, that restroom. Um, the other big concern is, and you see this in every one of your buildings, is your door handles. Um, this is not, I'll call it the, the new current standard while it's not the knobs which is really good um, it's not the knobs but there's not an opportunity for a staff member to be able to lock themselves in a room in an emergency situation so um, what you're seeing there is from the inside of the room for a staff member to lock that door they have to leave the room use their key to lock it and come back in and, and secure the door um, right now we're putting a key on the inside as well so if in 
in an emergency situation, they can shut the door, lock the door without having to leave the room. So um, those are some things that we noticed uh, on the infrastructure side, or at least the architectural side, um, that we would at least recommend you get addressed. All right. So the next one. Yeah, thanks. And I think we're going to turn it back over um, to talk about some of the improvement list and, and pulling everything together. So, yeah, yeah, thank you, Chris, for kind of walking through that. And um, you'll notice on the kind of the short term improvement list here, we've kind of broken it out between the, the major components. Um, basically, everything that's kind of reaching useful life is what's been identified on here. Um, you can obviously see the numbers on here. This is kind of a, a building wide, kind of a full fledged upgrade, uh, top to bottom for your facility. You'll notice the architectural piece is uh, probably the largest component. And a good, as Chris was just describing, a good portion of that is just kind of making sure that we kind of update the rooms for the programming that you'll have in those spaces. So that's something that we would definitely want your feedback on and we'd want to work with you on like what's the best design, what amenities do you need. Um, you know, ultimately, we'll, we'll, we'll end up designing what you would like to have in there and then we would, we would obtain competitive pricing for that. So this building has quite a bit more. Uh, obviously, we went through Berger. This is Wadsworth. Before I move on to the high school, do you you guys want to stop or have any questions specific to, to Wadsworth at this time? Okay. Hang well, on. Yes. So you talked about these uh, useful lights and most, especially with the uh, HVAC stuff, 20 years. So what are you experiencing out there um, with other buildings going beyond the 20 years? And uh, is that, 20 years is a lot, but it's not, you know. So um, what, what do we expect to start to happen if we don't do this? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll start with the response and then um, Peter, Matt, if you guys can chime in, if I've, if I've missed anything from your perspective, you guys have a little bit more experience than me on the, the HVAC side, but to kind of help summarize, um, what we noticed that does pretty well going longer than the kind of the 20 year time horizon are typically like large air handlers, like large units that are kind of inside your facilities. Um, those can actually go, you, you, we've seen air, large air handlers that can go 30 plus years. And there's no reason to replace them if they're still in good condition and they're still serving their purpose. Uh, we, we traditionally don't get a whole lot of success. Um, the, the challenge is on like right here where it says the fan coil units. A lot of those units, you get to 20 years, pretty much like the systems you have, many of the parts become obsolete. So we actually have a lot of facilities folks that are actually buying parts off of eBay uh, because they're just not manufactured anymore. And most of those units, we don't see very many of them last longer than 25 years without there being a significant problem um, to, to the classrooms. So it kind of depends upon uh, it kind of depends upon, I guess, which component you're talking about. Uh, boilers can typically go quite a bit longer, too, if they're some of the older style bo boilers. However, the trade-off is most of the older boilers are quite a bit more inefficient. So the newer boilers, you actually, you can get a pretty good payback on the gas savings. And most people would like to do that because within a few years, you can kind of get that project um, Kind of positive from the from a gas savings perspective. Matt or Pete, can can I ask you guys to chime in if you have any other knowledge on or wisdom on those? Yeah, I I would like to. Um, the, the the big at this building that you also see at the high school is what Tony had referred to as the fresh air units. Uh, we also call them the ERVs. They have a media inside of them that's uh, for. Uh, helping to try and recover energy as you exhaust air from the building you're bringing fresh air in that the media that's in those wheels wears out um, and honestly there are some temperature issues that I'm sure you're seeing now with respect to those units not being able to keep up on either a very warm or a very cold day uh, the the media just wears out over time uh, so not only do you have the mechanical issues of you know, the motors wearing out and things like that, but uh, 
issues with the media in those units. Uh, with the fan coils themselves, like Tony said, they may last 25 years, but the last five years, they're going to nickel and dime you. You're gonna, your maintenance people will be up in there changing motors, uh, worrying about little pinhole leaks in coils, uh, all items like that. So you could get 25 years out of them, but the last five could be maintenance headaches. Is that media replaceable? Uh, it is um, in some of the units. Uh, I believe the ones that you have, it is replaceable. Uh, I don't have pricing for that at this time. The, the other issue you run into with that system, uh, if you do decide to change that system, right now, per energy code, the system is supposed to be able to uh, what we call economize. So if it's really nice outside and you can bring in 100% outdoor air uh, to either cool or warm the space, uh, the system is supposed to be able to do that. Uh, with a fresh air unit, it's only supplying the minimum amount of fresh air to that room and the rest of the air is the recirculated air. Uh, so you can't economize in those rooms. So it kind of hurts you on efficiency. Uh, it saves you up front on the minimum outdoor air, but it hurts you in the times when you can economize. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we look at the middle school, high school? No, we're ready. No, we're good. Okay, great. All right, so we'll kind of jump into uh, the middle school, high school. So. I think as I was maybe starting to say a little bit here, you're gonna see some similarities, um, a lot of similarities between what we just discussed over at Wadsworth and a lot of the same systems and a lot of the same vintage of systems over at your middle school and high school. So it's obviously something that's gonna to have to be on the radar. And as a school board and as a community, you guys will need to kind of say, okay, you know, we have these things that are out there how do we address them and in what order do we address them? Um, real quickly, looking at their equipment list at the high school or middle school, high school, you'll notice most of the boilers here are 19 years old. You have one newer one. Uh, chillers are in good shape. We just replaced those. Uh, we just finished that up. So you're gonna be good to go in your chillers for a long time. We talked about fan coils. Once again, your classroom HVAC which you have, I, I believe the high school is about three times the size as Wadsworth. Uh, just simple math here, we've got about three times the size of classroom units. So there's, there's quite a few of those that are approaching that same, same useful life, as well as some areas that are served by, they're called VAV boxes, an air handler that provides uh, individual heating, and, heating or cooling to certain spaces. And then your pumping systems are getting some age on them here as well. And actually for your pool unit, as far as how you condition the air and the space in your pool unit, both of those pool units are almost 20 years old. And then as far as temperature controls, your building management systems, it's kind of one of your oldest actually in the district here. Um, so there's definitely gonna be some discussion on you know, prior, prioritizing and hopefully having your staff comment on where the greatest pain is and maybe kind of where you guys, uh, where you, your teachers or the maintenance staff are spending the most time, but both this building and Wadsworth kind of have, have similar timeframes. Just taking a real quick look at some of those key aspects again, this is your boiler plant in the top right. You'll kind of notice you get all the same vintage boilers, which is great. We always like to go with the same vintage boilers um, once again, these are not high efficiency. The other challenge and the other thing that we would like to fix uh, when we up, upgrade this facility, right now your, your main boiler plant, it's required to run year round. And what I mean by that is both your, your pool heating systems for the water and your domestic water systems are tied into your main boiler plant. Um, when we, when we, our recommendation is when you replace all of these with, we'll just replace them with two high efficiency units, we actually then would split off 
the pool water heater and split off your domestic water heater so that during the summer months, you don't have to run your main boiler plant. You can run a much smaller boiler for your pool and for your domestic water. Hopefully that, hopefully that makes sense a little bit there. Uh, we, we just talked about this. It's a very similar slide to what we looked at at Wadsworth. So nothing new as far as what the recommendation is. It's more a function of, well, which building do we want to look at, you know, kind of tackling first, or is it a combination of both? But we still have these ceiling mounted fan coil units in many of the classrooms, and we still have fresh air units on the rooftop. And we would then be proposed going back with either a vertical classroom unit system uh, or even possibly a VAV system in certain areas, which VAV is variable air volume um, type system. Both of those will do a great job for your classrooms and for the learning environments. And we did talk about the pool units. So right now, right, you've got two of these pool pack units that kind of condition the space. Um, these are, these are units that typically do not go very long past life expectancy. Uh, they're outside. They usually kind of get just a little bit beat up. Uh, the pool environment's pretty tough to, to maintain the condition as is. Um, and then these units also use um, kind of an older, uh, more obsolete refrigerant. It's called R22. Uh, so it's, since it's no longer manufactured, whenever you're, you, know, you have a, a cooling need or, or a, a refrigerant need, it's just very expensive to kind of get that uh, refrigerant in the system. So our recommendation is just replacing those units with very similar but compatible newer units. Um, actually, before I go through this too, Chris, can you maybe comment, I don't have slides on this, but can you comment on what we looked at from a architectural perspective in the high school? It's in, it's in the binder uh, for, for, for the board members. But Chris, if you could provide a little background on that. Yeah, so what was shown is short term at the middle high school um, was really focused on the central plan of the HVAC. Um, what you're going to see in the binder is a lot also in that middle level. And as we kind of lumped all the general trades and architecture into that middle, um, middle tier, um, obviously the biggest piece on that is your, um, your locker rooms and uh, most notably the, the old main, the main gym locker rooms, the two that are under the bleachers um, are in really bad shape um, and really scary shape. So um, those two are, are really high on that priority list. Um, right now, we focused on, on the HVAC side on this one. Um, know that that's uh, in there. We also want to look at some of the security gates and security doors, making sure that there's plenty of egress to get out of your building safely. Um, and there's ways to accomplish that as well. And there's a, there's a few other things in there, some finishes in the, the band room that's starting to fail a little bit. But um, And, you know, some rooms that could probably use a, a coat of paint. Um, but in general, again, the building's well-maintained. Uh, those locker rooms um, really, really need some to be addressed here at some point. All right, thanks, Chris. So you'll you'll notice here, obviously, on the kind of the shorter term uh, cost estimate sheet, um, the, obviously the numbers are, are are significantly higher. There's just much more square footage at your middle school and high school than your elementary schools. So that's really kind of the driver for this, and really for the board's benefit, as you guys are looking at that last page and all the numbers, we really try to, we really try to spend time putting together what I'll call is just kind of a, a, a useful estimate. Uh, it's based upon other projects that we have done of similar size, similar scope. And we try to make sure that we're, we're kind of calculating that into this so that you actually have, I'll say real estimates for planning purposes as you as you all look forward and figure out how to best accomplish some of those needs. So they are estimates. Um, I'll kind of walk you through here some of the next steps because we definitely uh, have a lot of work to do. Um, if, if in fact you say yes, we have some priorities that you'd like us to, 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 to tackle for you. From our perspective, we're really here tonight just kind of sharing some of these needs letting you guys kind of digest the, this binder and this information. Uh, we'd like to then kind of work on understanding what your priorities are 
and be able to finalize some design for those top priorities and those top, those top improvements. Once we have a firm design, we take that out for competitive bid. So we'll actually, just like, like in your past projects, we'll hold a contractor pre-bid meeting. We'll invite all the contractors out, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, sheet metal, insulators, equipment providers. We'll get all that pricing and bring it back to you all in a spreadsheet. So you can see all the bids for all the quotes for the, for the work that you've asked us to design. Only once we actually sign a contract, you know, do we actually kind of have an agreement to kind of get that work moving forward? Uh, on this timeline, uh, and this kind of assumes if we're looking at next summer for a project, we'd like to have that contract sometime in the fall so that it allows us to lock in contractor pricing and be able to order long lead equipment well in advance of the next summer. And the last couple items, I think, I think more or less would be on your end, which is, you know, understanding how you want to fund it, securing financing. And then ultimately when we begin, uh, most of the heavy lifting, the actual being on site would start in the summer of 2021. That's super high level, just some food for thought as you guys are processing uh, this information. Awesome. So we kind of walked through that, I think at a pretty good clip. And obviously it was still a summary because there's a lot of information that we weren't able to kind of cover tonight. Uh, but we, you know, first off, thank you for letting us do the study. Uh, we, we really hope that it's going to be useful information in your planning purposes. And really we've got the rest of the team members here tonight. So I'll pause here briefly and, and see if there's any questions that we can answer for you tonight. Uh, any questions? Rich? <laughs> Tony, this is Rich. Thank you for the presentation. You're welcome. As well, your team. So in the past, we've had another study done and this is kind of correlates with what's been reported in the past and I believe that's on our district site as well so once this report is up uh, the community can look at it and, and what I'm looking for is I, I know we have serviceable life so at some point if they've been proactively maintained we can get more years of service I know we just spoke about some elements that may not have that capability. So when we're doing a replacement and restoration project for the buildings, uh, we, we have to make sure that we get more bang for our dollar. So uh, working with you on a roofs in the past, it was a very seamless and smooth list project that we had as well as the chillers. Um, so when you say you're nuts to bolt shop, how do you, my question is, how do you uh, work with other districts in our area? Do you do any work in Northwest Indiana? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, well, we do work pretty much across the whole state. We work with a lot of districts in Northwest Indiana. Um, you know, right now we're do, we're still finishing, we're still in the process of the, a really large project with the, uh, with Munster schools. We're doing work with North Newton schools. Uh, we got a lot of work in Porter County. Um, I mean, I think we, as far as our company, we've worked with about 60% of the school districts in the state of Indiana, kind of during our 20 year uh, time frame. So we, we certainly can provide, as always, we can always provide a list of uh, references of schools in your area who've who've done work with us. And obviously you guys have kind of one experience with us, but um, we can certainly provide any of that if that would be helpful. Thank you. Uh, one more question, please. So because these estimates and their large dollar items, I think that it's last time that the Griffith Middle High School had a program where they restored the building was 1998. So we're 22 years approximately later. That would be when our roofs which we just did part of the roof replacements and our mechanicals, 
and aesthetics, of course, as things wear out and you get more efficient in different areas. That's why these dollars are so large at this time. Yes, yeah, that's that's actually pretty well said right there. That's correct. Okay, because it's important to know because this is a lot of money we're talking about. And how, how do we fund it going forward and really pick and choose what we need to do first. So I just wanted to make sure we are on the same page and uh, also wanted to thank you and your team because if Superintendent Reese had mentioned this correctly, this report was done um, without a cost to the district. That's correct. Yes. Right. Well, thank you. It was very comprehensive and I'm sure we will have other questions in the future. Yeah. Thank you, Rich. And any other questions that the board may have, please, please share that with your superintendent, uh, whether it's your thoughts on possible scope or just other concerns and our team will definitely get back to her so she can share our response with you all. That's, that's no problem. Uh, not really a question, just a comment. Got to digest this and go through all this. Um, it's a lot here, um, but um, what I'm going to be looking for is, you know, we can't do everything. We can't do it all. Um, what items on here can we squeeze some, some more life out of it? What items are critical to educating kids? What items are critical to safety? And, and then kind of go from there. Um, the one. Um, uh, question I did have though is these and back to the useful life expectancy. So it's, it, what I'm seeing is we're not out of the norm here. The, the, the life we're approaching 20 years on most of our stuff, and um, so I don't I don't think I'm seeing anything out of the norm. Yeah. Is that correct? You're correct. Yes. Used or neglected or any of that. 20 and 25 years old. I, I would I would agree with that. Yes, that's correct. And, and if I could comment too, you know, you mentioned about you can't do everything at once. Um, let me just reassure you that when we do these types of assessments and we've presented to districts, you know, time and time again, very, very few districts have I ever, you know, kind of when we've done this type of assessment have been able to say, we can get all of that work done we have the money, we have the funding. It, it's, it's always been, we kind of need to split this up into chunks. Um, we, we need to phase it in. We need to look at how our funding works. We need to see what's best for our community. And we work, we will try to work with you all very closely on really thinking, thinking hard about the priority list of what's really most important, like you said, from the learning environment, from the student perspective, and also then hopefully from the energy and cost savings pers perspective as well. So that's, that's very, very common. Most schools can't, can't get it all done when they want to get it done. And I just want to reiterate, I had asked uh, them to do this assessment and yes, it was for free. Um, one to compare it to the old one, like Rich said, um, to see is there similarities, what's right. But also when I came on board, we had a lot of roof leaks. We, you know, we're experiencing different different temperatures. One day your room may be warm, one day it may be hot, uh, cold. And um, there were a lot of issues that several staff members um, within our buildings would say, oh, this is an issue. And so I want to thank Tony and his team for uh, doing this assessment for us because um, I find that it's really comprehensive and it really details and puts into chunks our time frame uh, for our capital projects so when we should look at uh, the maintaining of our buildings and like you said uh, john the useful life of our things yes our items are 20 plus years old and you're going to just like your home normal wear and tear on them nothing's been abused here it's just as rich indicated the last time everything was looked at was 1998. So um, I just want to make sure everyone was aware of that um, in the community. Um, but thank you, Tony. You guys did a fantastic job with this assessment. I know it was hard, even during COVID times. You're very welcome. Thank you guys for the opportunity. And thank you for your time. John may have a question or a comment. No. Rich, you said something about this going up on the website. Is that true? 
I mean, had, are you guys okay with that? I mean, it says confidential on here. They did do this for free. I'm just, oh, I'm like, I just, uh, I mean, it, you know, um, uh, Superintendent Reese, we're, we're going to be fine with that. Uh, we traditionally put that on there just to kind of make sure that we are protected or, you know, contingent upon um, competitors because, right, we, we always have to compete for every job we, we do. Um, fortunately, we, we're just finishing our first project with Griffith Public Schools, and this would actually be additional phase. Um, so we're not as, I'm not as concerned about that. And if you would like to share that, I can get you something that we could, um, you know, kind of take the uh, proprietary and confidential off of there for you guys, if that's helpful. Yeah, so maybe we have a little more conversation. If, is it in its entirety? I mean, this is very impressive. And I, I get what it, this, this speaks to how you do business. So I don't know that you want your competitors to see this. So um, thank you, John. So maybe I'm a businessman to a businessman. Yes. But uh, oh, can I speak? Sure. So Tony, you can probably do whatever you need to uh, before I put it out on the website. Whatever you would like to be put out on our website for people to look at. Okay. But, and thank you for that comment, John. I appreciate that very much because very rarely do we get someone even that thinks about that. So thank you. Well, what I wanted to say, we we, we would like to be able to put out as much as we possibly can to the community because this this involves the community and all of you, all of you community people who are listening in if you have any questions anything there's there's always a portal and we want to communicate because this isn't just our project it's all of our projects tony matt Pete, i i appreciate the time the effort i appreciate tonight um, the past history with, with the group with performance services has, has gone really well. So I'm pleased with the, um, with the partnership going forward. Um, Jen, did you? No. Okay. All I right. Just want to talk, I, yes. Before we say anything out, okay. I'll make sure they're good with it. Okay. Good with it. Yeah. 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 They'll, you'll know. You'll know what you want out there. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. John. Okay, so we're going to digest this, and we will be back to you. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll let you go. We'll actually jump off the, the call at this moment, unless you need us to stay on um, for anything further. Thank you. Well, thank you. You're free to move about the cabin. <laughs> All right. Good luck to you guys tonight. Thank you for your time. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now moving on here to, we have a resolution number 688, transfer funds from education fund to operation fund, and at this time I'm handing it over to Megan Dama. Yes. Um, so we did just order extra microphones for those that see us passing around. Um, we do hand sanitize directly after this meeting. Um, and, but there are more microphones ordered and hopefully they'll be here before the next um, board meeting. Uh, but yes, this resolution is to do the um, transfer of funds from education operations that we've started to do monthly instead of biannually. Um, we were still able to stay within the 15% um, guidance um, at this time for that transfer. So this is to approve that transfer. So I make a motion to approve the transfer. I'll second. Um, Jennifer, are you still with us? Yes. Yeah, I've lost my visual. I can't see anything anymore, but I've got a button to unmute myself if you need if, to hear you. Rich and I are kind of ugly anyway, so you can see that. Can I get a second? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I think I did, but I'll second that motion to okay. approve resolution 688. Okay, do we, do we have any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that. Okay. Um, opposed? Okay, obviously not. Motion carried. So we're going to move on to Griffith Public Schools transportation update and approval. And I'm going to hand that over to you, Michelle. And do you mind, Kathy, if I just keep it for four 
4.4 on down until it gets to, well, I might as well just include the whole thing if that's okay. So I'll just go and state each one and ask you guys have questions and then move forward, okay? Um, these are going to be rather quick, and there is a reason why I left them on there, because you're not going to approve any, um, some of these tonight, and I'm going to share why. Okay, so we're on 4.3, the Griffin Public Schools Transportation Update and Approval. Tonight, um, I was prepared to present the transportation changes for the 2021 school year, um, but after receiving that nice 38-page document, I felt it necessary and pertinent for all of us to wait until we refinalize that re-entry plan because I don't know if I'm going to have to run other routes in addition to what we had originally planned. So I do not want to say we're going to approve this and then all of a sudden come back and go, nope, we need to make changes regarding the re-entry plan. So at this time, I want it to be um, that you table this this item, and I ask for you guys to table it until the July meeting when we hopefully can do the plan itself. I need a motion to table um, the transportation update the approval. So moved. A second. Discussion? Are you okay with that, Jennifer? Yep, all good. Okay. Um, Hi. Which brings me to the start and end times. Again, um, I was prepared until I got that 38 page document. And um, I don't know what the re entry is going to be. So I hate to commit and have you approve something if we would make changes in July. That's not fair to the parents in the community to approve something. They go, oh, wait, 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 we need to change it again. So I'm hoping they remain as presented. But again, until we know transportation and all that sort of thing, I ask that you table this item as well. Okay. I'll get a motion to table this item. I move that we uh, table item 4.4 to uh, for the uh, 2021 start and end times to uh, future dates. I second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, no opposed? Motion carried. On to Ms. Reese. The next one is GMS GHS course catalog. This one is finalized. Um, thanks to the hard work of our counselors, they've been busy finalizing this course catalog for the 2021 school year as it provides us with the updates and changes needed to the courses for the pathways which we have outlined for our families and, and for our students. I have heard from some parents that they are concerned with the pathways as it may not pertain to their child's interest or passion. We've heard that from a couple and we ask that everyone please be patient as we cannot fully implement all the pathways for next year as it will increase the amount needed to fund these pathways, such as teachers and resources and all the things that come along with that. And we could not afford that all at once. So together we have strategically outlined what pathways we can afford at the start of next school year and place those within the course catalog. So we our hope, and I know it's Mrs. Brenner's hope, is to increase the number as we continue to plan and receive funding for them. Some may say, well, what pathways did you choose? We chose the ones that were the top, the majority, about 80% or more of our kids wanted to be in, wanted, had some type of interest or passion in. So there may be just a few, less than 5% of our population that their pathway wasn't chosen. But that does not mean they cannot continue on um, in, in school and learn what they need to learn. Um, the, the counselors have addressed that and figured out ways to still keep them in their interest and passion in the pathway, but we have not formalized and put that whole pathway together all in, in sync. And really, we're talking about these incoming freshmen and um, some sophomores as they continue on through. So I wanted to make that statement because I know that's been floating out there and I've gotten a couple emails regarding it. 
Um, so if you have questions regarding the pathways or the courses outlined in the catalog, I ask that you email Mrs. Brenner and she will get you an answer as soon as she can from our counselors. So yes, I do. I would like approval of this course catalog. Okay, um, first of all, one thing I want to say is to the community, you can see that um, we have some real needs for funding. So mention that. Can I get a uh, motion on the um, course catalogs? The approval. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Any discussion? I actually have to write it as 170. <laughs> Trust. I just got it tonight. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. All in favor? Aye. Well, discussion. Yeah. Discussion. So, so um, I was involved with some of the process to get to this, and pathways are a good thing. And I've heard those same complaints, and just want everybody to understand. This isn't like a major in college where now you know you're committed to this career. Um, it's just to have a focused learning environment um, um, that you we start young to start to think about a purpose driven life that you have that you have an intentional learning experience that with a purpose and that and, and that purpose can change and that and that pathway can change and. Um, but we're not just going to school and going through motions. We have an intention to a certain education, um, and and that's the point. Right, right. And this is just our start to it, as you said. And it's it's all relying right. on funding and, and building off on what we do now. Correct. And 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 so if there's a specific career that a student's interested in, we don't have that pathway yet. We're picking the major ones so that they have a similar. Right. So if you're you know, whatever. I can't come, I'll come up with a bad example, but 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 my point is, if there's something very specific that that student's interested in, there's got to be a pathway that's at least similar that we already have. Correct. Right. And I will reiterate, we're still um, in in um, partnership with our CTE at Hammond. Um, we do have three young ladies participating in nursing. I, uh, for lack of better terminology, it's a medical field type of course this summer um, through IV Tech. We have made connections with them to where even we allow our kids to go on campus and take those type of courses through IV Tech. So you can see we're broadening, but it does not necessarily mean we have to have it on campus um, for our students. We have other avenues. So if there is someone that has an interest or a passion that we cannot tap into within our own reaches and our because we don't have staff we do have that capabilities we just have to go out and find it and we will find it just like we did for these three young ladies um, and i'm very excited about that because this we have teamed up with Hobart schools to do that um, they have a group of kids um, in this particular pathway and we were asked if we wanted to be a part of that and i said well yes why wouldn't we and we have three young ladies doing it this summer. So it's exciting to me that we're allowing them to start um, getting some of that coursework for while they're still here. And that is um, at low cost to no cost to that student. Michelle, will, will we be partnering with businesses in town? Is that on here or that's something we're working towards? We, will, we are having microphones coming. Um, that is a part of the pathways. You'll see when you get down into the juniors and senior years, there's observations, internships, externships, all that built in. I know it's 170 some pages to read. Michelle, where is this available? Will this be available? So it is on the website. Okay. Oh, it will be. Okay. It has to be approved first. Well, yeah, that's true. Okay, John. And again, because I keep hearing about anxiety about the pathways, we also want to hear about pathways that we don't have that you wish we had. Right. It's important to us. Yes. Um, I mean, I'll use my own son as an example. His interests were in robotics. There was no such thing as robotics at Griffith School. 
So he made it happen. So um, we do neat things in schools. We hear from students that um, have an interest that others might have as well. Correct. Well, having said that, um, some of these maybe something that we haven't thought of or someone comments or brings to us could be um, a partnership with a business in town that we haven't even considered yet. So there's a lot, there's a lot available. Yeah, so it's real exciting. And uh, Jen, is there anything you wanted to say? Nope, I'm all good. Okay, so um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, none opposed? Motion carries. The next one is 4.6, the Griffith Public Schools 2020-2021 textbook fees. Um, we were set, as I stated a couple other times ago, we were set to have that approved for this board meeting. Um, the question comes into play, masks, sanitizers, Clorox wipes, all of that sort of thing. And the board needs to, and I need to decide how, and we're gonna pay for all that um, because as you have heard from Megan, and I keep hearing over and over again and reading, and I even shared articles with you again tonight, um, there's gonna be some costs given to the schools that we have not budgeted for in the least. Um, and so we needed to figure out where those um, extra costs are gonna lie, who, who's gonna help us pay for that. Are we gonna ask students to bring their masks? Are we going to provide it for them? Um, if we would go that route, hand sanitizers, are we providing that for them? Um, you know, all those questions. And so I would like for you guys to table this one as well. Okay, so on uh, 4.6, public schools, 2020, 2021, um, textbook fees. I need a motion to table. So on this 4.6 and the 4.7, we're going to have the same thing, the student handbook. We're, we're, we need to hear what we're doing for opening before we can make yes. our policies. So can we do 4.6 and 4.7 together, table and both? I move that we table 4.6 to um, for the textbook fees. I second. Jen, um, discussion. Jen, anybody? I'm all good. Okay, um, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay, motion carries. I don't think we can speak on number 4.7. On the number 4.7, Griffith Public School Student Handbook, I'd like to get a motion to table. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, on to point uh, 4.8, Milk, Bread, um, and Food Award 2020-2021. Um, this is our normal Milk, Bread, and Food Award. Um, Joe has gone out and elicited what we needed. Uh, for the bids, and there, there they are. And so, um, again, he is recommending for us to approve the milk bread and food award as presented um, within your packet tonight. So, can you, I ask for approval? <laughs> okay, so can I get a motion on the milk bread and food award? So moved. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 4.9, Griffith Public School Supply List. Okay. Can I get a motion to table 4.9? Move that we table uh, section 4.9. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, board. I know that was cumbersome, but I felt okay. like it was needed because a lot of parents are asking for those items. Oh, that's okay. That's that's, that's their job. Okay, moving on to audience participation. We have nothing. Okay, good for the cor good of the corporation. Um, John, did you want to speak? To yeah, something? I did. So um, I should have done it during the consent agenda for the personnel report, but we have uh, a few new hires and a, a, a couple of them that I uh, was uh, part of, and I, um, but you can talk about the new employees that group at public schools, but two of them in particular, well, 
welcome aboard um, Julie Martosio and Amanda Perkins. Julie is going to be serving as a counselor at her middle school, and Amanda is going to be the dean at Barriger. And um, they both are terrific people and with a whole lot to offer us, and it's exciting to have them. There are um, three other um, new hires in the special ed department. They're teachers. We're excited to have them. Um, we have Jane um, Watkins, and we have Stephanie Bondi Smith and Amy Kinsey. So, welcome aboard. We're happy to have you all with us. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. So I want to thank all of you who tuned in and encourage you, if you have any questions, comments, please send them our way. We, uh, we do appreciate the communication. Our next regular board meeting is July 9th, 6 p.m. in this room. If the governor has opened the schools by that point, we will have, um, we will open this up to the public but we need to make sure i will add on to that though we will continue to do live streaming for those that cannot um come or you know want to see it from the comforts of their home i want to make sure that uh they are aware that we are going to do that so i do appreciate it yeah. it's something that we're going to continue from this point on um, okay so meeting is adjourned